Hi, I'm Joan Rodbang McNeil, and I'm here to talk about a study of groundwater nitrate that I recently completed in the Fort McLeod area of southern Alberta. I conducted the study with Dr. Kathy Ryan from the University of Calgary, with funding from Alberta Health and the Old Man Watershed Council. The Old Man Watershed is in the southwestern corner of Alberta. The study area is about 600 square kilometers, located southwest of Lethbridge and south of Fort McLeod. There is an unusually good groundwater supply in this area, and groundwater is a valuable source of drinking water for people and livestock. The study area contains more than 270 water wells, with locations shown as red and green dots on this air photo. Before we conducted our study, there was very little understanding of groundwater in this area. Groundwater is water that fills the pore spaces between underground sediment. Recharge is when water from rain and snow melt travels down through the soil zone to groundwater. Most of the newly recharged water travels through the shallow groundwater zone and eventually discharges back into surface water. The groundwater contribution to a river is called base flow, and about 25 to 40 percent of Alberta River water comes from base flow. The prairies are underlain by bedrock in the form of soft rock that was deposited when dinosaurs were on the earth. Soft rock in the Fort McLeod area is a clay rich deposit called shale. Groundwater flow in the bedrock is mainly through fractures. Bedrock wells in the study area often produce a decent amount of groundwater, but where fractures aren't encountered, the wells are usually abandoned as dry. Most bedrock in the prairies is covered with till, which is sediment deposited directly by glaciers. The texture of glacial till ranges from a mixture of sandy clay with stones and boulders to heavy clay with few stones. In some places the till has been eroded and bedrock occurs at surface, such as in this photo. Preglacial gravels occur between till and bedrock at many prairie locations. The gravels were deposited by ancient rivers flowing from the uplifting Rocky Mountains. Many of the gravels are aquifers, meaning water wells produce at least enough groundwater to supply a household. Preglacial gravels are common and productive in the Fort McLeod study area. The photo shows groundwater shooting out of a newly installed well in a gravel aquifer. The Ardenville Bench is an upland in the southwest corner of the study area. It's about 200 meters higher than the surrounding plain. Much of the groundwater in the area recharges on the Ardenville Bench and flows down slope to contribute significant base flow to the water tent belly and Old Man Rivers. Small recharging depressions are common in native range on the Ardenville Bench. Many gravel aquifers occur on the Ardenville Bench, as shown in this schematic. Where these gravel layers intersect the edges of the bench, groundwater flows out as spring water. The photo shows a location where gravel pinches out and a spring emerges. Groundwater springs supply water to numerous wetlands at lower slopes. The wetlands are important water supplies for landowners. Most water wells in the study area are productive, but about 60% of them contain nitrate. Health Canada has set the drinking water guideline for nitrate nitrogen to 10 mg per litre for people and 100 mg per litre for livestock because nitrate can have adverse health effects. About one-third of sampled wells contained nitrate at concentrations higher than the health guideline of 10 mg per litre. The goal of our study was to find out why there's so much groundwater nitrate here. Nitrate in groundwater usually indicates contamination, either from manure, inorganic fertilizer, or human sewage. This schematic indicates nitrate leaching to groundwater from a manured field. Other sources of excess manure include manure storage areas, livestock winter feeding areas, and confined feeding operations. Once nitrate reaches the groundwater, it can travel through shallow groundwater to water wells or surface water. The Old Man Watershed is unusual because it has another major source of groundwater nitrate in addition to agriculture. The areas shaded in orange and circled in red are locations of detailed groundwater investigations conducted in the 1980s and 1990s. At each location, natural nitrate was found in glacial till. Water that recharges from the surface tends to move mostly through the shallow zone, and only a very small percentage recharges to deeper levels in thick till. Natural nitrate occurs at depth in glacial till at several places in the Old Man watershed, in groundwater that is predominantly hundreds to thousands of years old. The natural nitrate most commonly occurs in till at depths of about 7 to 18 meters, but the depths are variable. In previous studies in the eastern part of the Old Man watershed, agricultural nitrate was detected in shallow groundwater at some locations, but natural nitrate occurred only in glacial till and at the bedrock surface. Till doesn't supply enough groundwater for a household well, usually. 
The groundwater of nitrate at these locations is very old and it's mainly immobile. In the Fort McLeod study area, nitrate also occurs in gravel and bedrock aquifers that supply water for people and livestock. We want to know the source of this nitrate. Is it agricultural or is it natural? About half of sampled wells shallower than 6 meters contained nitrate. Our results showed that some of this nitrate was from agriculture. Land in the study area is predominantly used for grazing and crop production. The dark green areas are native range and the light green areas are tame pasture. The cream colored areas are non-irrigated annual crops. Irrigated land is shown in red. The predominant land uses are not ones that pose a significant threat for groundwater contamination. But even here there are some hot spots where nitrate from manure leaches to groundwater. Many of the shallow wells with nitrate were located near potential nitrate sources such as manured fields, manure storage areas and confined feeding operations. For a small number of wells we had nitrate samples from several different years. Nitrate concentrations in some of the shallow wells increased over the years consistent with an agricultural source. Although we know some of the nitrate is agricultural, it is unusual for 60% of water wells to contain nitrate in an area of low agricultural intensity. When agriculture is the nitrate source, we expect the highest nitrate concentrations to occur near the water table, with lower concentrations in deeper wells. In this study area, nitrate was more common below 6 meters than at shallower depths. Almost 80% of wells at depths of 6 to 25 meters contained nitrate and 44% contained nitrate higher than the health guideline. Moreover, one-third of wells deeper than 25 meters contained nitrate. For a few wells, we had samples from different years to as far back as 1961, and nitrate concentrations in deeper wells did not change with time. The higher nitrate at depth and the stability of concentrations with time indicate a natural nitrate source. In summary, both natural and agricultural nitrate occur in the study area. Our evidence indicates some nitrate in shallow groundwater is derived from agriculture because it is associated with sources of excess manure, it occurs in young groundwater, and concentrations in some shallow wells have increased over the years. There is also some natural nitrate, as indicated by nitrate that occurs in groundwater that is very old, at concentrations that have not changed over the years. In general, nitrate in shallow wells is more likely to be agricultural, and nitrate in deeper wells is more likely to be geologic. However, the groundwater setting of the study area is so complex that there is no clear split between shallow agricultural nitrate and deeper geologic nitrate. Some geologic nitrate occurs in the shallow zone. What we do know is that both sources of nitrate occur in the study area. Why is agricultural nitrate a problem when the groundwater already contains geologic nitrate? Concentrations of agricultural nitrate can increase to be a problem for people, livestock and surface water. Geologic nitrate occurs in deeper groundwater, and the majority of concentrations are lower than the drinking water guideline. Moreover, the balance between geologic nitrate and surface water quality has evolved over thousands of years, and surface water quality is not threatened by geologic nitrate. How can we maintain or improve the quality of this valuable groundwater resource? Regardless of the source, nitrate should be removed from drinking water to avoid adverse health effects. This area is not unique. Beneficial management practices are critical to protect groundwater quality in any area. A recent study in an intensive agricultural area in Ontario found that shallow groundwater quality improved within a few years of improved agricultural practices. Beneficial management practices for manure and fertilizer management include appropriate storage, timing, application rates based on crop needs, and buffer zones where manure is not applied adjacent to surface water. Till in this study area and across Alberta ranges from more than 20 meters thick to no till at all. Shallow bedrock and gravel aquifers covered with thin till are more sensitive to contamination than deep aquifers covered with thick till. Careful land management in areas of thin till will help to protect shallow aquifers. Some of the most productive and vulnerable aquifers occur on the upland Ardenville bench. Land on the bench is used predominantly for grazing and hay production and healthy rangelands are ideal for the protection of surface water and groundwater quality. Manure application on cropland in both upland and lower slope locations must be carefully managed to minimize surface water and groundwater contamination, especially in areas of thin till. More information on this study is available at the website of the Old Man Watershed Council.